All right, what's up, everybody? I'm Dave. This is Dave Splains, and you know we've been talking about a lot of all of these different jobs with um, building different devices or uh, different programs to collect data and everything like that. But I don't want to sit there and have it on my um, computer all the time. So. I'm putting this on a on on a, on a Unix system or a Linux system. I'm putting this on on a Raspberry Pi, which is pretty obvious because it says Pi at Raspberry Pi. So, you know, a little bit a little bit obvious. Um, and the reason why is because power, uh, Raspberry Pis are they're low power. Uh, they can run forever, um, and you can schedule jobs on them with cron jobs now. That's what we're going to talk about today because I don't want this running on my laptop. I don't want my laptop on. My laptop pulls at like 20 volts and like 4 amps or something like that. So it's like 80 watts or more. And I, I that's that's me guessing. I don't even really know. I haven't looked at the power adapter or anything like that. So um, it's pretty power hungry. Now, a Raspberry Pi... Um, that can run for roughly 15 amps because the current one is five volts and three amps. That's the Raspberry Pi four. And even then it doesn't run three amps all the time. It runs three amps when it's really working. So um, it'll, it'll idle anywhere between under five watts to 15 watts. So, um, that being said, I wanted to talk about cron jobs because, uh, cron jobs is a way to automate a job. It's like task scheduler. And, and the reason why task scheduler and cron jobs isn't preferred necessarily is because as we see here at the bottom of crontab.guru is that there's no way for cron to know if your program has ever or if your task has ever started or failed so um ideally you could write a program that looks to see if things have been changed or updated or something like that and have that run but if cron tabs doesn't run one job and it might not run that job because that job would have to be automated or constantly running um there could be an issue i mean there are ways of just building it into the program itself but at the same time it's just that's that's kind of a headache and usually there are like in sql server um I believe in at least 2019, if not 2000, what is it, 16? I think they might have started in 16 was um, the task scheduler where the, you can actually schedule tasks to happen. So, um, but before I keep on going, you know, I'm, before I start talking about this even more, let's actually jump in here. Now, this would be a great time for you to remember to like and and uh, subscribe I, I keep forgetting to do that hit like and subscribe in the beginning I don't know why I keep forgetting to do that we're only like two minutes in now four minutes in now that's insane so we have cron tab uh, with an E flag we're gonna go down in here now um, we're going to go back into the late 70s, early 80s era, where there is no such thing as a mouse cursor here. You have to actually have to um, down arrow the cursor all the way down. Now, uh, there are lovely little indicators here, and we have it here as well with contab.guru. And we have all of the different signs, but it doesn't, it's not perfect because it doesn't really give you examples here with 
uh, Crontab Guru. I have another website. I'm going to put it up. It's a little bit longer, so I don't even want to try to say it. Um, but Crontab Guru is awesome because it's very clearly laid out. Minute, hour, day of the month, month, and day of the week. If you want to do it um, annually, we have these options down here, apparently. I don't know. Um, so let's get started. I think with, with month, you can actually put in like what the month is. So I already have two jobs running right now at roughly nine o'clock because we have nine, then we have 21 because it's 24 hour clock. Um, 2100 is 9 PM. And then we have nothing, nothing. So nothing in the day month, nothing in the month. I suppose, technically speaking, if you wanted to have something run annually on like a certain day, like say you wanted to run a program that ran on um, an election day every year. So you would go with nothing, nothing, and then day of the month, you would have what, the second? And then it would be, month would be, I believe 10? Because you have to remember it should start at zero. So January would be zero, and instead of November being 11, it would be 10. And then December should be 11. Could be wrong on this, but we're gonna stay with where we are. And then, um, nothing for day of the week. Now, these actually have day of the week, Monday through Friday, because Monday starts at one. But now this would run for that one day, and you would be able to grab like statistics on votes or something like that. Um, I only say this because I actually did have a job where that came up where I had to do um, I had to actually analyze some voting thing it wasn't for the votes itself it was for like server um, server metrics like you know do we have any crashes or you know how how bad was the traffic stuff like that So, time to have a little bit of fun. Now, we have a program, and we already know that you can only do it once per minute, roughly. You could do it like maybe 47 seconds or something like that, but let's just go with one minute. So, this would be zero, and then forward slash, sorry, asterisk forward slash one. And then we would go with zero, you know, asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. Or if we wanted to have, um, say we had something that was actually like grabbing stock information. So you wanted to have, um, once per minute. And then you wanted to have, say, 8 a.m. because I'm not really sure on that one. And then it would be 8 and 16. Let's just do 17. And the reason why we would do 17 is because I'm just not really sure if I can do half hour increments here. Uh, and that would be asterisk, asterisk. And, oh wait. And day of the week, yeah. So it would be asterisk, and then it would be, again, one through five. And then, we come with the program. So if it's a 
Python program, you write Python. This is a Python 3 script. So there we go. And then you merely explain where you want to go. So in this case, it would be media, Dave Splains, and then um, all together, I believe, is the program name that we gave it. Now, this is important. Okay, Raspberry Pi, the operating system works off of an SD card. And usually, uh, an SD card can only be written to and read from so often. So what, what most programs would do is they would like save up all the event logs in the system and then ship them out to the card daily or every couple of days or whatever. And the idea behind this is because of the fact that uh, they still exist. All these event logs of everything that's happened, they still exist, but they haven't been written to the card uh, individually. See, so like you uh, on a standard computer with a standard hard drive the event log would be you know done at that second you know and it doesn't matter because it's a hard drive it can be written to and read from so many times um now media is usually the file folder that you would connect to because inside media is all of your uh, external storage. So I'm connecting to a an external storage here called Dave's Blaine's, and I'm accessing a program written there that is Python three. Um, And it's running from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. Every minute, Monday through Friday. So it's a pretty cool little thing. You can write into your program, like, if it runs, do this. If you, if you, you can just get a thumb drive and do this. But you can't just write to the thumb drive because often it's not technically mounted. And in a Linux system, you actually have to mount the device. And I think tomorrow we're going to talk about that because it's just kind of like this big long thing. Um, and we've already gone so far in today. But the the reason why is just. Uh, it's not mounted, technically speaking. You can read and write from it, but it, it has a protection. It has a block that you can't write to. So um, if you were to write a program and you were to read the program every minute and then send the output to an appended file, I would do that all on an extended or external drive. I would not do it on the actual system. Um, as these are already done. So a little bit of information um, from experience. And I will talk to you tomorrow because I have to uh, rewrite the program and set up the cron job and everything so that we can start collecting data for tomorrow or for the next time I need it. All right, I'm tired. I got to let you go. See you in the next one. Hope you have a good night. Goodbye. Don't forget to like and subscribe.